గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ లేడీస్ అండ్ జంత మ్యాన్ పొడ్డోసు దొంగవి ఐ హమ్ కాపీ ఇన్ జంత నాడు అట్ ప్రెసెంట్ ఐ హమ్ ది డిపార్ట్మెంట్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ బిసిఎంటి అండ్ జాబ్ ఇన్స్ట్రక్టర్ అస్ వెల్ ఇన్ ది సబ్జెక్ట్ ఇంటిగ్రేటెడ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ సిస్టమ్ వాస్ వి స్టార్టెడ్ ద సెషన్ ఐ వాంట్ టు లిసన్ కేర్ఫుల్లీ ఇన్ అ బోయిన్ అన్ ఇస్ హావింగ్ నోయిస్ I will give you time to ask if there are things that we cannot understand. So, about this subject, this is a new subject from the new curriculum and the subject is Integrated Management System. And in this subject, you will learn the other organizations that are related to the safety certifications and operations of all kinds of vessels. So, <clears throat> let's talk about the international management system. How did the IMO or why IMO, International Maritime Organizations, uh, developed this ISM, International Safety Management. The ISM code was born out of a series of serious shipping accidents in 1980s, the worst of which was the roll-on, roll-on peri-herald of pre-enterprise which capsized at Cipruki in March 1987, killing 193 of each 539 passengers and crew. And the cause of this accident was a combination of human error on board and management failings on shore. The Herald of Free Enterprise Public Inquiry Report concluded that from top to bottom, the body corporate was infected with the disease of sloppiness. So sloppiness, it means the vessel is dirty. In and out, the vessel is dirty. And The investigations and accidents revealed major errors on the part of management. Management, it means this is the fault of the captain, chief mate, chief engineer, the second engineer, and from the shore personnel. And in 1987, the International Maritime Organizations, IMO, assembly adopted resolution 8596 open parenthesis 15 and close parenthesis which called upon the maritime safety committee to develop guidelines for concerning shore based management to ensure the safe operations of proto passenger ferries The code establishes safety management objectives and requires a safety management system, SMS, safety management system, to be established by the company. And what is the company? Company, which is defined as the owner or any other organizations or persons such as the manager or bare boat charterer who has assumed responsibility for operating the ships and who, on assuming such responsibility, has agreed to take over all duties and responsibility imposed by the code. The company is required to establish and implement a policy for achieving these objectives. This includes providing the necessary resources and short-based support. Every company is expected to designate a person 
or persons issue, having direct access to the highest level of management in order to provide a link between the company and those on board. What followed was much with the change in maritime safety administration. In October 1989, the International Maritime Organization, IMO, adopted the new guidelines and management for the safe operations of ships and for pollution prevention shipping operators a framework for the proper development, implementations, and assessment of safety and pollution prevention management in accordance with good practice. Following industry feedback, the guidelines became, became the ISM code in November 1993. ISM code in November 1993 and were incorporated a new chapter 9 of the International Maritime Organization 1974 International Conventions for the Safety of Life at Sea or SOLAS in May 1994 and became mandatory for oil tankers and bar carriers in 1998 with general, with general cargo ships to fall by 2001. So what is the purpose of the ISM, ISM code? The purpose of the ISM code is to provide an international standard for the safe management and operations of ships and for pollution prevention. The objectives of the code are to ensure safety at sea, prevention of human injury or loss of life, and avoidance of damage to the environment, in particular to the marine environment and to property. So the procedures required by the code should be documented and compiled in a safety management manual, a copy of each of the on board. This FFS manual that you can buy on board the vessel, especially on those international vessels, content of everything about the safety procedures of operations that the vessel's management is followed. So, what is the impact of this in the uh, uh, ISIM the industry? The ISIM code requires nearly all the whole ships operators to write and implement on board safety management system for their ships and make a designated person sure responsible for every ship's operations. This DPA is from the master or chief mate or maybe another officer which was designated by the company. For many ship owners and operators, ISM was simply a new legal framework for the safety system they already had, but for others, it led to major and much needed changes in operating culture and organization. It it forced companies with poor or weak management system to create a formal structured safety management process for the first time, even if they saw it as just more retail. So, the poor companies of the weak management are those managed by officers or engineers that are not well trained or maybe lack of certifications. Certainly, the ISIM code, ISIM code has made shipping safer and cleaner over the past two decades. 
In 2005, the IMO Maritime Safety Committee asked for a report on the impact on the impact of the code from an internal national group of experts. Based on the data collected, the group concluded that where the code is embraced as a positive step toward efficiency through a safety culture, tangible positive benefits are evident. The Standard Club has been assessing member management system since 1993 through the Member Risk Review Program. Linked to the Ship Risk Review Program, the review was formerly based on minimum operating standard, but since 1998, it had focused among other things, on how ISM requirements are being met from the perspective of liability insurer. As such, it has seen at first hand the many positive changes the ISM code has brought to the marine industry. Most of the members are now using ISM effectively to increase safety on board the ships. This includes creating safe working practices and working environments, making suitable safeguards against potential risk in continuous improving safety management skills of personnel, as well as the development of emergency response plans from both safety and environmental protections. So, what are the objectives of the ISM code? So, I will give you number one, it ensures safety at sea. Number two, it prevents human injury or loss of life. And number three, avoid damage to the environment with focus on the marine environment in all property. The icing code establishes the following safety management objectives of the company. Number four, provide safe practices in ships operations and working environment. Number five, establish safeguards against all identities identified risk. And number six, continuously improve safety management skills of personnel ashore in on board ships. This is here to exclude the preparations for emergencies related to safety and environmental protections. So, let's talk about the requirements. The requirements of the ISM code may be applied to all commercial ships over 500 gross tonnes. The ISM code is a chapter in SOLAS. If SOLAS did not apply, then ISM is not mandatory. So it means if you are not following the SOLAS uh, regulations, then ISM code is not mandatory. Compliance with ISM code is sometimes required by vessel supplier regardless of gross tonnage. So, what is a vessel supplier? Vessel supplier, these are the companies chartering the vessels. They are the one where the vessels earn their money. ISM code applies to ships regardless of the date of construction as follows. Passenger ships, including passenger, high-speed craft, not later than 1st July 1998. Oil tankers, chemical tankers, gas carriers, bulk carriers, and cargo high-speed craft of 500 gross tons or more, not later than 1st July 1998. Other cargo ships and mobile offshore drilling units 
of 500 gross tax on all not later than 1st July 2002. So, the ISIM code requires every company to develop, uh, implement, and maintain a safety management system which includes these functional requirements. Number one, a safety and environmental protection policy. So it means the company, as a responsible corporate citizen, shall consider its obligations to maintain highest standards of the environmental management and ensure for, for all its members, <coughs> consultants, contractors, and customers, a safe and healthy environment free from occupational injury and disease. Number two, instructions and procedures to ensure safe operations of ships and protection of the environment in compliance with relevant international and flag state legislation. So, this section highlights the International Safety Management Code for emergencies related to safety and environmental protection. And number three, Defined levels of authority and lines of communications between and amongst shore and ship personnel. So the company should define and document the responsibility, authority, and interrelations of all personnel who manage, perform, and verify work relating to and affecting safety and pollution provisions. And number four. Procedures for reporting accidents in non conformities with the provisions of the scope. The SMS should include procedures ensuring that non conformities accidents in hazardous situations are reported to the company, investigated and analyzed with the object objective of improving safety and pollution prevention. The company should establish procedures for the information of corrective actions. So, what do you know about the non-conformities? So, non-conformities, it is not you are not working or you are not following the safety regulations in doing some work. Or maybe if you are a IP master is uh, doing some training to the vessel and you are not following these instructions. This is on uh, most of uh, the non conformities or in documents, documentations, the, uh, the uh, authorities ask you to make these documents, but you forget it, and with the time you came on board, you don't have the paper, so that is another non conformity. So, number five. Procedures to prepare for and respond to emergency situations. Emergency preparedness is the requirement of the ISO. This is the International Safety Organization Sporting Service Award and calls for your organization to have procedures and plan in place to respond to emergency situations in accidents that can impact the environment. The procedure needs to be periodically reviewed tested were practical. Below are some common emergency response procedures used by organization in an expression of what they might contain. So, last is uh, this. the procedures for internal audits and management reviews. So, this is the verifications, uh, the company verifications, review and evaluations. So, uh, next time uh, we will uh, discuss the uh, continuation, continuations of this uh, subject.